Hi everyone, my name is Aryan, and I'm going to be talking about the role of proofs in our day-to-day -day life, the role of mathematical proofs in our day-to-day -day life. We're going to talk about what proofs really are, why they're so important, and how to go about proving a mathematical statement. At any given point in life, for any statement, there are three possibilities. Either the statement is true or false, or we don't know. For example, water is colorless. That statement is true. Whereas there is other life in the universe, we simply don't know. We have a little bubble called the facts that we know and a dangerous bubble called the unknown. We always want to grow our knowledge. So we want to add new statements that we know hold from the older statements. So we have certain old facts. And from these, we want to build new facts. In the mathematical world, mathematical proofs take old statements that we know to be true and give us a new statement. Let's look at a silly example. Let's say I've lost my phone and I'm trying to find it again. What I'm going to do is try to find its position now from what I know about it from before. What are my basic facts? I left my phone on the table, so its last position was the table. I also know that phones don't move on their own. From these two simple facts, I directly deduce that my phone has to be in the same place. Let's look at a mathematical analog of this question. Let's say I have a system of equations x equals y plus 3 and y equals 4. These two statements are my facts. All I need to do to find the value of x is literally put them together. So I put in the value of y and I have that x is the sum of 4 and 3. So the value of x has to be 7. Similar to the phone, all I had to do was putting my facts together. And this proves that x has to be 7. Before going into some harder proofs, I want to talk about why proofs are so important. In any activity in life, to become good at something, we need to practice certain muscles and strengthen them. For example, if you want to be good at football, you need to practice with your legs. You need to strengthen your leg muscles. If you want to be good at tennis, you need to strengthen your arm muscles. Mathematical proofs are the best way to train the muscles which perform logical arguments and deductions. But what do I mean by logical arguments and deducing something? And what's the application of that in real life? Well, every time you lose your phone and you're trying to find its position, what you're doing is you're deducing its location from the facts that you know i.e. its previous location. Every time a detective or a police officer tries to catch a criminal, what they're doing is they're deducing who the criminal is from the evidence they have, the facts. Political debates are another great example where you see proofs in real life. Each party presents facts and statistics that holds true in real life. But what they do is they deduce different conclusions from the same facts. It's up to you and your power of logical deduction to understand who is using the facts correctly. But deducing things in real life is hard. Let's go back to the case of the lost phone. If I've left my phone on the table, there's so many things that could change its position. My mother could have taken it and put it on another phone. There could have been an earthquake by the time I went to the other room or my brother might be trying to steal it. So there's too many factors to control when we're trying to do, to do something in real life. Whereas in the mathematical world, proofs are undeniable. A mathematical fact is always true. Of course, within the framework you've chosen. Let's look at an example. If I tell you that X is a natural number and X plus three is 10, from these facts alone, we can use our rules of arithmetic 
and we see that x plus 3 minus 3 has to be 10 minus 3, so I'm subtracting 3 on both sides, and this tells me that x has to be 7. And indeed, x has to be 7. It is undeniable that x is 7. 7 is the only natural number such that when you add 3 to it, you get 10. And this is exactly what makes the mathematical universe the best place for you to practice your logical deduction skills. But how do we actually prove something in mathematics? If you're given a mathematical question, how do you go about proving it? Well, in my experience, the best solution I found was to draw a little line in the middle of my paper. On one side, I write facts given. These are the facts that your question already gives you. This is the data that you can already tell from the question. And on the other side, you write conclusion. This is what you want to get to, whether it's the value of x, whether it's proving a, an actual statement. And then you reflect, how do you get from the facts that you're given to the conclusion that you want? What in your mathematical toolkit can help you get from the left-hand side to the right-hand side? Let's look at an example. The question says, prove that n squared plus n plus 3 is an odd number for all the integers n between 2 and 6. On one side, I have facts given, and on one side, the conclusion wanted. What are the facts that I'm given? n is an integer, and n is between 6 and 2. What is the conclusion that the question wants me to have? It is that n squared plus n plus 3 is an odd number. How do I prove this? I have a statement about n that I want to hold for certain values. Well, the easiest way to go from the left-hand side to the right-hand side is to actually check that this value for these n's is an odd number. n has to either be 3, 4, or 5. So I exactly check the value of n squared plus n plus 3 at 3, 4, and 5. And every time, I get an odd number. So I've proven the statement. This approach to proving a statement where you check every possibility is called an exhaustive proof. Because if you think of it in the world of police officers, the analog of this proof would be to strap down every suspect you have to the lie detector and check if they actually committed the crime. So it would be an exhausting task. But what if we have a harder question? What if the question says, prove that n squared plus n plus 3 is odd for all integers? Here, the conclusion that I want to draw is still that n squared plus n plus 3 is odd. What are the facts that I've given? n is an integer, and that's the only fact that I have. I can no longer check this conclusion for every integer. That's infinitely many values. So I have to think of another way. At this point, you realize that you don't actually have that many facts on your side. So you have to reach into your mathematical toolkit and remember what you know about something being odd or even. For example, I recall that the sum of two odd numbers would be even. And the sum of even numbers, again, would be even. What else do I know? I know that odd plus even is odd. And I also have a squared there. Do I know something about the square of an odd number or an even number? Well, if a number is even or odd, its square is still going to be even or odd. These are all facts that I have in my mathematical toolkit. What I do now is I say n is either odd or even. If n is an odd number, then I have the square of an odd number plus an odd number plus another odd number, 3. The sum of these two will give me an even number plus an odd number, which will again 
e odd. What if n is even? If n is even, a similar argument holds, and I have the sum of two evens being even, and add another odd number to it, 3, and I get an odd number. I could have provided the same answer to the last question, where we, we said that n is between 6 and 2. But when n was between 6 and 2, I had a limited number of options, so it was actually to my benefit to prove it by exhaustion. I want to conclude this video by reminding you how important proofs are to your powers of logical deduction and how important it is to take facts that you know and deduce something new from it. I also want to remind you if you get scared from proof questions, if you get a question in your exam that says prove something and your heart starts beating, remember you know all the facts that you need. All you need to do is draw the line, write what the conclusion is, write what facts they gave you, remember the extra facts that you need to get from the left-hand side to the right-hand side. Lastly, I want to thank you for watching this video. I hope you found it useful.